Good morning, friends. It's day 50, and I am just continue to, I'm just continually overwhelmed by the way you all show up day in and day out to pray for Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, for to pray for the innocent, to pray that God would be glorified and the people would be protected. I'm so grateful that you all continue to care um, that you continue to like and share and comment and get the word out. Um, this wouldn't be possible without you. And we're also so grateful for all of you all who have been uh, praying for us and encouraging us in this. It really means a lot. Um, there is definitely a fatigue for everyone, but uh, God is on the move. And so we're super grateful to you for that support. Uh, let me right off the bat address something. Uh, yes, our website uh, apparently was hacked. We're back online. But the way that you give is run through a completely separate site. No, and, and it was a denial of service type uh, attack. So it wasn't something where you, any of your information was in danger. Um, if you've been giving, that's through a totally separate thing. Uh, I'll, uh, I can even uh, put that link in here when we get done. You'll see it. it's arisealife.org, uh, arisealife.churchcenter.com. They run all the financials, then through Stripe, which is one of the largest in the world. So it's all totally safe. Thank you for your concern. Uh, but again, we're super, super excited. Um, for what God is doing in Ukraine. Yes, there are some difficult things to talk about, but some days it's easier than others to be encouraged, and there's so much to be encouraged about today. And so we're gonna take that encouragement, get our hope on, get a re-established uh, in our view of how awesome God is, how much he truly is moving and loving and caring in the midst of all these horrible things. And then we're gonna take that joy and hope and bring it with laser like focus on the things that we believe God is gonna change through our prayers. Man, we've seen it again and again. We're gonna see it again. We've seen it, we're gonna see it today and we're gonna see some things tomorrow because of the prayers we pray today. All right, the first thing off the bat, they were not able to open any evacuation corridors yesterday because basically the Russians can't control their own soldiers. Really, again, that speaks to the thing we've been praying for is the divisions between the people who are negotiating, the people who want Russia's economy to be reestablished, and the military types. They can't get along, so the negotiators are trying to say, hey, I think we got to negotiate. Nope, the Russians, the military is like, nope. Well, praise God, even so, over 1,500 people were able to be evacuated out of those areas right there in Zaporozhye and uh, right along the front and coming out of Mariupol. Praise God. But today, nine uh, corridors have been opened. So pray for the protection of those people. Um, man, um, so as many of you all remember, very early on, as Russia came out of Crimea, they went to the west and took Kherson. Then they wanted to go on to uh, Mykolaiv and further on to Odessa. They got shut down. Well, they're not just shut down. They're getting pushed back. Um, many of you also may remember that there was a huge airfield there in Kherson that they had, they had all these helicopters ready to go totally destroyed by the Ukrainians to the point where they had to relocate to another airfield. Well, uh, satellite uh, imagery was showing in the last couple days they were building up again for a major assault there. The Ukrainians, there's been huge bombs in the last few hours there going off. And there's indications that the Ukrainians are pushing hard from the direction of Mykolaiv, taking many villages on the way to Kherson. There are many, uh, you know, groups within Kherson that are the occupied territory who are fighting against the occupation. There are many, um, there are many, uh, you know, groups of, of uh, you know, paratroopers coming in. It's a mess. They pray they lose Kherson. This is this would be literally Kherson is the only major city they managed to take. Pray that it be taken, man. The people there are not giving up without a fight. Praise God. Another thing that's happening 
many of you guys know, but they are they are moving their resources massively towards the city of Izum. That's to the southeast of Kharkov, a small town city that they took, and they've been moving there because they want to do a massive push, uh, both to encircle to kind of that region, but even press to Dnipro. And we've been praying against that that building, uh, all all of that stuff. Well, guess what? They just blew up a bridge um, that on that main road that would that so they can't even keep going but more than that what that does exactly what happened with the 40 mile convoy you guys remember in Kiev that leaves all of those trucks and tanks sitting ducks they have been so terrified of being sitting ducks that they literally they have orders in the Russian military to drive and not stop even if you're being shot at don't protect yourself just drive and but now they can't even do that and even before that from space they're seeing is this entire column of tanks and trucks is on fire they're exploding they're trying to get a number of different tanks that are that run on aviation fuel there's some of the fastest that like for a blitzkrieg lightning type attack those are the ones that are most vulnerable to this and they're exploding into fireballs. Praise God, this is happening. They're shutting it down. Another thing is they're continuing to see is logistically Russia is collapsing. So. Over, throughout the Cold War, people overestimated the size of the Soviet army and the same with the Russian army. Yes, they technically have the equipment, but most of the time it's mothballed. Most of the time uh, they're not bringing it out for like live fire exercises or for really using it. And so as a result, things like dry rot in tires sets in. And especially in, mud, in the season of mud, these huge tires on the trucks, they run with really low inflation and that it exacerbates the situation and their tires are breaking apart. So listen, hear, hear me on this. Uh, I, I love it, is, is uh, novices study strategy while uh, professional soldiers study logistics. Why? Because see, it's not the tank that, 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 that is dangerous. It's the shell the, sh the tank shoots. Without the tank, with tank without a shell is just a bulldozer praise God, what's happening is with these logistics, they're not able to get the shells, they're not able to get the gas, they're not able to get um, the parts, and they're not even able to get the food. And without these logistics, there can be no war. And so both, both internally, it's breaking down again, as we've been praying, but also it's breaking down because they are literally stopping them in the track and listen, that whole column that's coming to his Zoom is being shut down. Pray that whole thing gets shut down. Um, man, whew. Um, to that point, this attack that we've been telling you is coming, everybody's saying is coming. Why hasn't it happened yet? Um, honestly, uh, we may, we're, we're going to know afterwards, but, but right now, um, the indications are exactly what I said. So this has to, to be effective. Dvornikov is a great, uh, um, uh, uh, tactician. He's really good at strategy. And so he's only going to begin the carpet bombing, the massive air raids in full when they have the ground troops in place to make them the concerted attack. So what happens? is the carpet bombing hits they destroy all the ukrainian defensive positions that's the plan and then immediately while they're still rocked they run them over with the tanks they run over those defensive positions and completely take the territory that's the plan they've only got one bullet in their gun by the way the russians are, are throwing everything on the die they're rolling the die trying this is they've got to win this and so they are coming hard and they're trying to overcome but guess what if the ground troops are not in place, if they're not ready, then they can't begin carpet bombing. See, they can begin carpet bombing today, man. There are massive groups of flanker uh, bombers set to go in Voronezh, in, in there, there is, uh, and in Rostov, and uh, I'm sorry, the Engels Air Force Base to the east. Um, but guess what? They will not go until the, the forces are ready to go. Praise God. Continue to pray those bombers don't take off and continue to pray that the resources, the, the, um, the, um, the, the tanks, the weapons, man, Russia is so running so low. We talked about this yesterday. They are bringing it in from all parts of Russia, but not only that, they are actually pulling back. They're asking back the weapons they gave to, um, 
to militants in Iraq and, and in Iran and getting those back. Man, they are running low. Praise God, continue to pray that this, that everything completely collapses because we're praying for what? A bloodless resolution. Another great example of this, huge, huge. Russians have been bombing. We, up to this point, I believe the Ukrainians have only been able to take out four small ships. Why? They just haven't had the facilities. Well, guess what? I've said this before, Russia rolls ones while the Ukraine just keeps rolling sixes a great example of that they used a Neptune missile that's the Ukrainians largest uh, um, ground to ship air and missile they shot the Moscow it is the largest it's the flagship of the entire Russian Black Sea Fleet it's a 600 uh, plus foot um, guided missile cruiser like these are the missiles they're using to attack all these different types of things but it's huge it's 500 sailors it was hit by a missile and but guess what that's not enough but guess what it hit their ammunition lockers and the whole thing went up in flames but again we're praying for bloodless resolution right even as it's on flames they were able to evacuate off all those soldiers see God loves the Russians as well God is for them he loves them and he is protecting them continue to pray for bloodless resolution people say it can't happen you just saw it right there, right there. Praise God. But um, the Russians are saying they've contained the fire. It's not going to be battle ready anytime soon. It's also a huge symbolic victory because this has this again. This is the flagship uh, flagship uh, of their fleet. Oh my goodness. Another great thing that's happened is um, in Slovakia has said, remember how they provided the S-300s, uh, anti-aircraft uh, missiles? Well, and they said, we will provide it if they would be provided with a replacement. And uh, America did that. Well, now they said they will give all their MiG-29s, which are their best uh, airplanes, if someone else will protect their airspace. They didn't even ask to have planes replaced. Well, so this is a really good sign that we're going to finally get some replacements because it still is incredible to the degree to which uh, the Ukrainians have been able to keep the airspace of, of uh, Ukraine relatively clear. Um, I will say this, um, signs of the impending attack are that they, um, again, last night, this morning, there have been air raids all across Ukraine because what's happening is Dvornikov is sending out recon to try to ascertain exactly what the anti-aircraft um, uh, facilities are so that they can plan the attack. He just wants to be ready, but continue to pray that they shoot those down. There was an, there was, um, I believe there was two planes, Russian planes were shot down in the last 24 hours. Um, man, a Zelensky, man, he keeps being on his game. He keeps upping the ante, the, the language, uh, you know, uh, step by step and he made a really beautiful very clear uh, quotable statement he basically told Ru to U EU EU you've got to do an oil embargo because you've got to stop funding the Russian war machine what they're making basically he's tying together if you continue to import oil you are funding Russia's killing machine that's awesome. That's a really helpful uh, way to position it. Pray that that reaches the ground. Again, we've watched this. The, the European governments have not wanted to act until this groundswell came from underneath, from the people, um, from their parliament members. So this is, this is, this is good. This is good. Uh, another thing that was awesome is the Polish, Latvian, Lithuanian, and Estonian presidents came to tour um, and they went to Bucha, they went to Irpin, they went, they, you know, they saw the stuff with their own eyes they are now witnesses and therefore there's there's something happens when a leader goes and actually sees it with their own eyes they they gain a voice they're no longer speaking for their countries they're speaking for the world and so pray I, I believe they've now got a moral voice pray that their voice is amplified um, as they continue to speak out um, um, also, one of the things that's happened is, is again, there's this increasing talk of genocide. So why genocide? Again, it's a, it's a very important term because it, it declares um, that this is an intentional act to destroy uh, a group of civilians regardless of who they are. 
um, that's obviously happening. Um, and, and, and it's systematic based upon their nationality. And that's exactly what's happening. And that has been demonstrated that's happening. And Biden has gone on record. Trudeau's gone on record. Um, increasingly, people are using this language. And this changes the way the international community then responds to it. Um, and uh, so... Um, one, you know, uh, exclusion of that is Macron has come out against saying that. Why? Macron's in, in France is in a fight for his life. Uh, he's in a head to head with Marine Le Pen, the, uh, the far right, um, uh, nationalist. Um, and they're, they are going head to head. It looks like Macron should win, but he has to play it safe. And so he's backing off of calling it genocide. Uh, whew. Man, uh, guys, let's pray for the pressure to increase. Um, he's trying to survive um, to the end of the month. I, I think the 24th is when they have their elections. Um, but guys, pray that the pressure keeps getting jacked there. Um, uh, Odessa, um, man, one of the great things, we've been praying for the truth to be revealed. Well, they discovered how the local criminal gangs were partnering with the Russians and they were preparing for an occupational force and to take over. Praise God, this got uncovered. And so as a result, we prayed for this, that it, that instead of, of cr criminal uh, uh, and human traffickers being able to take advantage of the chaos, they would rev play, overplay their hand, reveal themselves, and be taken out. And that's what's happened. Odessa has managed to clean up a lot of the criminal gangs as a result. Praise God for that. Finally, um, there we begin to continue to pray for the release of those who've been arrested or attacked or taken. And there was um, a fourth prisoner swamp, a swap with uh, Ukraine and Russia yesterday with 22 uh, military and eight civilians uh, released. Continue to pray for those released, but also continue to pray for those who've been deported. So, you guys should be encouraged, right? God is on the move. Great things are happening. Again, as long as this, uh, quote unquote, uh, uh, this this attack um, in Donbass is delayed, it allows people to escape. It allows people to flee. Trains are still running. They're still getting people out. Praise God for that. And, and pray that it never comes, right? Pray. I mean, everybody says it must come. Well, listen, many things they've said must happen have not happened because according to the prayers we pray, guys, prayer changes everything. So so what's next? What are we going to pray for? What are we going to turn? Oh, I, I'm, I'm totally missing. So great news. Many of you heard the report. I even mentioned the report uh, yesterday that a thousand Ukrainian soldiers had surrendered to the Russians. Well, there is evidence that some did. We don't know how many, but what is happening is they, they are, there are, there are Ukrainians that are encircled, whatever, where they are is they're encircled in these two steel, um, foundries and, uh, they're at the port and these things you, so why is everybody there? Why are there hundreds of thousands of people there? Here's why. Because those things, there's two of the largest in the world, and they are built to withstand nuclear attack. They are built. They have to for the heat, but also just because of the way the Soviets designed them. These are true fortresses like nobody ever designed. Praise God. Even in the time of the Soviet Union, God was preparing a safe place, a stronghold, a fortress for the people. And that's why the Russians have been unable to take it, the concrete bunker. They, they can send missiles. They can't get in. God is on the move. God has, so he is moving for the people. Praise God. So let's turn it and let's pray. Let's pray for supernatural multiplication of resources, of shells, of food, of water for the people. Pray for supernatural um, breakthrough that that they would that the Ukrainians would be able to somehow resupply them and break through pray for the Russians to run out of supplies run out of means run out of morale run out of missiles run out of everything pray for that pray that the people of Mariupol would be protected and that no more deportations would happen. The Russians themselves have claimed that they've deported over 45,000 people out of Mariupol. It's probably much higher. Um, that's the other thing I want us to pray for. Pray for the deportations. Pray that no children, no families are lost, but they all get returned. Uh, already at least a couple hundred, maybe more thousands of people have been deported, again, against their will or by trickery. Um, so pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Um, 
Also pray because the Russians are attempting to mobilize. I mentioned this, they've, they've, they've called up 130,000 uh, conscripts. That's the annual conscription. They've just done it earlier. And uh, obviously these are not gonna be able to be battle ready, but the ones that came weren't battle ready, um, but they are cannon fodder. Pray for them, pray. Um, also, uh, the Russians are trying to forcibly conscript over 70,000 from the occupied territories of Donbass. And on top of that, they're still trying to get in the 40,000 of the Wagner group of these. And so pray that none of those ever reach. Because we talked about this yesterday, though what's happening is they're starting to get the picture, particularly in the military towns in Russia, and it's stopping. It's, it is, it is, they are, they are, they're refusing to go. And that's big because again, those are the dangerous ones. Those are the true professional soldiers. Um, pray also though about false flag. Russia has, is saber rattling uh, as is Belarus. They're both saying, um, Belarus uh, is saying, uh, warns of provocations from Ukraine to get Belarus involved in the war and Russia in Bryansk, they, they've had multiple situations where they're like, they are shelling us. And if they shell us, then like two, two cars were blown up, uh, right. Um, then we're going to use that as an excuse to bomb, to send missiles at uh, headquarters in Kyiv. Um, you know, it's kind of, um, and so these are, these are evidently false flag. They're too isolated. They're too strange. They may be Ukrainian forces that are not, that are in frustration doing something. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's a, these feel like false flag prey that they would have no power to a get Belarus involved. Cause it looks like he reached a pact with Putin that, you know, Putin's like, Hey, listen, I'll leave you to hang out to dry if you won't back me up. Well, so pray again that the Belarus troops will not fight for Lukashenko. They've, they've already, we talked about this before, that they've resisted actually being involved because people went ahead and they knew what was happening with this uh, um, when the Russian troops came into Belarus the first time. And so the Belarus troops have refused to fight. Pray that happens again, that, that uh, Belarus would not get involved and that Russia would not take these false flag uh, um, uh, actions as excuses to do more horrible things. Uh, also pray for China. China has continued to back up the Russian propaganda that these war crimes were not committed by Russians, all kinds of things. I mean, Russian, the craziest thing, one of the things they're saying now in Russia is that the Russians, that the Ukrainians brought in American and European bodies uh, in, in, in cold storage and laid them out in the street and totally fabricated this. Guys, <laughs> the number of bodies just defies, defies. We continue to pray that the truth would come out. Guys, continue, don't be overwhelmed by the horrible things we're going to continue to see coming out because you're gonna lose, A, the ability to pray, but also you're, it, when they come out, that is a praise. Why? Because they had already happened. We just didn't know it. Praise God, pray. When they come into the light, that is a sign of the enemy's destruction. It's the sign. It's his last card to play is horror and terror. He would prefer to do things in the dark and when it comes into the light that's a revelation of his end so pray that uh, that this ever increasing revelation of every single atrocity that's been done will come to light so that it will can maintain the pressure on Europe and the West to stay involved. Um, pray today, the Lend-Lease uh, Act in Congress is uh, that was already approved by the Senate. It goes before the Congress apparently today. Pray that it is rapidly approved because this is what will allow them to send the heavy equipment. Biden has already said they're gonna send helicopters. They're gonna send armored personnel carriers. There's some bigger stuff than that. There's Patriot systems. There are, um, um, there are heavy tanks. This allows with no red tape for them to send in the real guns. And uh, Zelensky has made it incredibly clear if, if the only way this war ends is if the West provides the heavy guns. And, uh, and that, that is in fact a fact, that is a truth. Uh, pray that the harpoons, that uh, anti-ship uh, missiles that um, Britain has promised will reach. Um, pray that all of these weapons will reach in real time before any attack begins. Uh, 
uh, continue to pray. Air raids are happening all across the country. The trauma that this ha inflicts on children and families, it's hard to express. Their mental, emotional fatigue now is to 11. Pray that they would be strengthened and encouraged, that people would be delivered from trauma. Um, we said it, uh, guys, we are so honored to partner with uh, Vladimir and Lily uh, and the Church Blaga Vista in Nipra on the ground. Many of you saw our um, update yesterday. God is on the move. Man, the church is rising up. This is the hour for the church to arise. This, listen, we, this is the hour to demonstrate that we are part of a different kingdom, that we are fundamentally not of this world, that we have a supernatural source of hope, courage, life, and power. And so uh, that he has not given us a spirit of fear, has he? But of love, power, and a sound mind. And so that's how the church is arising as they continue to go in and evacuate people out of the worst areas and continue to get medical supplies into occupied territories and children's food. So they continue to go into areas where the bombings are happening and getting people out, but also getting food in. Uh, they got a huge supply. They were, it, God has continued to give them wisdom of where and how to get supplies and then get them to who needs them. They were able to get a massive supply of medical, uh, of medical equipment and medical uh, supplies, and they were able to deliver them to a local hospital. They're, they're finding the shut-ins. They're finding the weak. Pray for them as they continue to have wisdom of who to partner with, who not to. You know, sometimes they're having people who want to part for, partner for wrong reasons. They're having wisdom of who not to partner with. But then they're also, God's breaking down the walls between churches, even uh, elevating them in the eyes of the local government where they're able to have access to resources they wouldn't have had because they recognize you guys have the wisdom of where and you have the integrity of where to send this and where to get it. They're watching as the church is working 24 seven to care for the weak, care for the, the wounded, pray for those who are fleeing, pray, um, you know, they're, they're having, they're having upwards of 130 people a night bedded down in their church as they're, they, they, they're just a rotating. People come in, receive supplies, receive food, and then they move them on. They provide the means to keep going west. God is on the move. This is the role of the church. And you guys, many of you guys have been able to be a huge part of that. As I said, we've been able to send over uh, almost $82,000 so far into Ukraine. Um, and it's, it's making a difference. Uh, I can't say it enough. This is the hour especially before the attack, they have options of how to get in places and get things out and get people out, get supplies in. And so pray for them to, again, continue to rise up and move. But I can't say it enough. Listen, you matter too. Listen, this is not, this is not a, a competition of who's worse off. Man, many of you have written from Africa about the things you're suffering. There around the world, there are gonna be food shortages because of what Russia has done. The Russian people are suffering. Pray right now. It doesn't matter where you are, you matter. And God cares for you. And so if you're overwhelmed by fear or terror, maybe because of the war, or maybe because of, of, the, uh, of what you're facing, I wanna pray for you right now because God, God loves you. His peace and his joy and his life are available to you. So God, I ask right now that you would cover every single person who's listening with your joy, your peace, your hope, that you would invade their hearts. Jesus, you died on a cross. You took upon yourself all the darkness. And so we give it to you. You paid for it. We give it to you. And Lord, we say we cannot live this life on our own. You never meant us to. You meant us to live from your life and your power. So we receive your life right now in place of our own and allow you to fill us with hope. Whew. As you're experiencing his joy and his peace, go ahead and type in what you're experiencing. Go ahead and, and give God the, the testimony. Wow. Um, also, listen, as you are feeling led to pray from hope, guys, again, I can't say enough. Don't pray until you get to hope. Listen, the, the, it, it, you ever prayed and you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling? You got to get to the place of hope so you can pray effectively. As you get to that place of hope and God's put something on your hand, mind, again, you can't pray for everything effectively. It's just, I mean, any more than a soldier can fight on all fronts at the same time. You have an area of the of the front. You have a part of the wall that you are called to. What's that? Type in what God's leading you to pray for. Ugh. By the way, we have an amazing team here. Um, I see Gary Phillips there. I believe Suzanne Roberts and others are there. We have an amazing team that would love to pray for you as well. If you need prayer for anything, just write 
type need prayer. And hopefully one of our team will be able to come alongside you and pray for you. We're hearing incredible testimonies of the things God is doing through uh, these prayers. God is changing the world, not just Ukraine, but God is on the move. And again, you matter. Um, if you want these, by the way, again, I, I never have time to give more than just a small part of the prayer requests and praise reports. Go to arisealife.org slash Ukraine. You're gonna find all of them there. Um, because, man, <laughs> uh, there's just so many. Again, we've documented every single day uh, that we've been doing these. If you want um, these in print form, you can scroll to the bottom, right click on any of the dates, and you can save as a PDF. Many of you, you are sharing these with your uh, intercessory groups and your prayer groups. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Every time you share, it makes a difference. Please, don't stop sharing. Don't think that it, it doesn't matter, that yours isn't. Maybe, listen, every time you share or like, even if nobody quote unquote sees your share, guess what? It actually helps to put you, Facebook watches and pushes it out further. So when you like, when you share, and when you comment, one of the things that's also huge is I love how you guys are commenting on each other's. Again, as you're seeing someone who's feeling called to pray the same thing you're praying, jump on, love on them, care for them. You guys can pray for each other. If you see somebody needing prayer, you can pray for each other. I, this, is, this is being the body. I'm so excited to see you guys from all around the world. Just to clarify again, I, I haven't said this in a while, um, but again, if you're wondering how we know what we know, one of the things is uh, we have been studying this region for 30 years. We have family uh, throughout Russia and Ukraine. Um, uh, in particular, we have family in uh, Novosibirsk and Moscow and also in uh, uh, Kiev and Lvov. We also have friends through, we ministered in Russia. We lived there for seven years, ministered there much longer. Uh, we lived there for seven years and we travel and ministered, traveled and ministered throughout Russia and Ukraine. We have friends throughout, ministry partners on the ground throughout, and we're in contact with them and God is on the move. And so um, also it helps is when you speak Russian or Ukrainian, you actually can get, we're able to access other resources and uh, online resources as well that you may not know or be able to access. And so that's part of how, and having studied the region for years and praying for the region, that's part of how we're able to put all this together for you guys. And, and, um, uh, and, and you guys are seeing, uh, if you've been with us through the days, you're seeing that what we're telling you is coming to pass. What we're sharing with you actually ends up holding up. And so Again, thank you for your trust. It means a great deal, but more than that, thank you for continuing to pray and raise up uh, prayer for others. Again, because uh, we are not in Ukraine. We've said this before, we are in uh, uh, outside of Atlanta, Georgia. We now pastor a church here. We have a lot of Russians and Belarusians and uh, Ukrainians in our body. And we only started these updates as a way to help them process and pray um, and for our friends. Uh, but God has seen fit to put a microphone and an amplifier to what we're doing. And so again, thank you that you guys are a part of this and helping to get the word out and to share this with the world. We love you guys so much. Uh, we're so grateful. Um, uh, finally, again, if you'd like to be a part of helping to give, you can find out more information at riselife.org slash help give. And once I get off here, I'll put the actual link that takes you directly to where to give. And again, 100% of what you give um, is going directly to Ukraine. We're, we're even, as a church, we've decided to, to take in the financial fees and, that happen in that so that we can ensure the maximum amount of money is going directly to Ukraine as quickly as possible. As quickly as we're able to get it, we're trying to send it out in large chunks to Ukraine. Again, we've been able to send almost 82,000. And so you guys are amazing. We love you guys so much. I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, so grateful for you all. Have an incredible, beautiful, joy-filled day.